question is, what is the procedure of doing a biofeedback scan? Okay, well let's go through the steps. The first thing, as I mentioned before, connect your Spooky Pulse, connect your generator, start Spooky. The software will, de will detect the um, hardware and will then um, start up. I'm now, I've just got through my screensaver, I hadn't touched my keyboard for a while, and I'll share my screen with you so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, as soon as I can find it, there we go. So we go to share screen, and I'll share my desktop to you. I'm sharing all my secrets, and I'll share screen. What on earth is that? Is my screen being shown? Okay, wonderful. Okay, well, I'm being bombarded with advertisements, which I really don't want to see. Uh, TurboTax, I really need that. Okay, so now we have Spooky fired up. I'll move myself to, actually, I can put it into the corner there. Put myself out of the way. Here I'm in my system tab. I can confirm that my connected hardware is one times Spooky Pulse and one times generator. So all's looking good. Now, at this point in time, we load a preset which is suitable for performing a biofeedback scan. We've got at the top here biofeedback. I'll select general and the all full system scan by David Burke is this one here. Now, it's called all because it can be applied, uh, the results can be applied by contact, remote, or plasma. Okay, now I'll ask at this stage for my assistant to come and um, sit down next to me. It's our beautiful Echo Lee. I'm sure you've um, you'd recognize her. Hello, Echo. Now just make yourself comfortable. Now the importance is to um, not be excited. It's um, it, you just ran outside. Now, um, when you're being streamed you know, live through the internet, it's hard to be calm, but it's, it's good for demonstrations just to show you the procedure of a scan. So these are the hand, hand cylinders. So just hold on to those. Now, for Echo, the finger clip works best. Um, we don't know why. Uh, for many people, the ear clip works best. So um, with all our kits, they come with both sensors, so you're, you've you're pretty well covered. So what we'll do, you don't need to hold on very tightly, but choose your lovely little finger there. Again, the wire goes on the top of your finger. And let's see if you've got a pulse. If I go to my control tab, and I'll, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. So let's have a look again. I'll reselect my um, all full system scan. Now, always select allow generator overwrites. That means the information is being written into the generator and overwriting anything else that may be there. Now, at this point in time, we can start the scan. Are you comfortable? Wonderful. Okay. Well, let's start the scan. And hopefully things will work. I can't see anything happening just at this moment. Now you see that there's a countdown that started. This is counted down from 30. There's a start delay currently of 30 samples. A sample is a heartbeat. Now what's happening is Echo has now got the chance of settling down and just focusing on nothing. Something I do quite a lot. And so once her pulse is stabilized, this will step to go to zero, and then her pulse will be shown on the graph here. Now you'll see that the graph is now changing colors. Every time that her pulse is above the average, which is this line horizontally shown here, it will be shown as red, which is a state of stress any time, any time. <laughs> And you see it's just shot up here as she laughed. It's important not to have any emotions or try not to have any emotions apart from calmness whilst you're performing a biofeedback scan. 
do meditation and let, you drop it down let's let's get into the low let's get it down here and you can see it's, it's dropping down now and then just thought of her dropping it <laughs> we're doing terribly guys but you know this isn't a good setting to do a biofeedback scan but let's have a look at the um at what's happening anyway now this preset has set the start frequency of 76,000 hertz and it will, it will scan to 152,000 hertz. You can see the frequencies are stepping up here. The frequencies are stepping up in 20 hertz increments. The step size has been set to 20, so that is why it's stepping up by 20 you know, on every pulse that's um, taking place. Um, the decimal places means how accurate you want the results. At the moment, it's zero. Um, with the, if the frequency is a high frequency, like in the kilohertz range, you don't need fractions of a hertz resolution. Royal Rife considered 0.025% accuracy was sufficient for targeting pathogens. I'll be covering the um, how to set the step uh, size very shortly. We've set the maximum hits to find as 20. That means at the end of the scan, 20 frequencies will be reported. And you can save these as a uh, program for use later on. Samples per step, that means how many pulses Spooky will wait before stepping to the next frequency. At the moment, it's one, which means on every pulse, the frequency will increment. If it's on, say, 10, Spooky will count 10 pulses, take an average of those 10, and then step to the next one. And so if you can set the samples per step to a value greater than 1, the accuracy is markedly increased. The downside is the time that a scan takes is proportionately greater. If I have a samples per step setting of 2, instead of taking 1 hour, it will be taking 2 hours. The start delay I mentioned before is the delay before the scan actually starts. Going through the other parameters, I can choose to select either the maximum or the minimum pulse rate. The maximum pulse rate you choose for detecting uh, things that you want to kill, be it microorganisms or other virus type things that you, that you don't really want in your body. You choose minimum to find the frequencies that made your body become most calm. And so those are more the healing frequencies. You can choose between detecting beats per minute, which is your basic pulse, which is the one that we recommend for most instances, or the heart rate variability, which records how much your pulse changes between heartbeats. The issue with heart rate variability is it cannot differentiate between when your body is becoming stressed and when your body is becoming relaxed. You can use heart rate variability uh, for monitoring during meditation, but it doesn't really have many practical uses for the functions of creating programs for killing and healing. You'll see the current pulse beats per minute is presented here, and the heart rate variability is here. The average are these two values here. Now you've got more options. You can choose to detect the running average of your pulse. Um, it's calculate using running average. Now, what this is is this. Quite often when you're doing a long biofeedback scan, by the end of the scan, your body is more rested and at peace than at the start of the scan. And so the resting state of your pulse is less. And so it's quite often wise to use the, current, uh, the running average um, as a, as a um, baseline because the baseline will move with the with the um, general pulse rate of your body. So at the end of the biofeedback scan, the running average will be less, and so any deviation from the running average will still be recorded as hits or misses. Or you can choose peak, which is basically the raw peak value. If you look at this graph here, the frequency that invade this spike here will be recorded as a hit. It doesn't matter that the average was high at that point, it will still be regarded as a hit. You can choose 
to have a two decimal places maximum. If you want to have a, if you want to reduce the duration of a biofeedback scan, you can choose that option, and that will do that. It means that Spooky will not go back and go try and increase the resolution up to five decimal places for the lower frequencies. You can choose single scan, which means Spooky will scan once, and that'll be it. It won't do a any subsequent scans to try and refine the frequencies. This is wise to set that to a single scan, but before you do this, you set the step size correctly so that no frequencies are missed. The step, lot, step size should be small enough so that no frequencies are stepped over. And grade program. This grade program is a, um, I'll show you through demonstration. We'll stop this biofeedback. Now, your pulse went very well. Congratulations. Uh, you can still stay there because I'll show the other two ways of performing a biofeedback scan. The scan I've shown just now is a general scan. The other scan you can perform, or the other two types of scans, don't, you mustn't touch the hand cylinders within the other part of your body because electricity passes between the electrodes. If you touch your body, the electricity will start passing through your leg and so your whole body won't be getting the effect of the signal. So let's have a look at the other two ways that speaking can perform a biofeedback scan. I always seem to pick abdominal cramps for my videos and today is going to be no exception. So now we have a program loaded in, we allow gen our generator overwrites and load them into the generator. Now the generator has four frequencies in here. If we do a scan now and we don't change any other parameters, we'll see how it changes. Let's have a look. There's a bit of a delay as Spooky fills up the necessary registers for the calculations. Then there's the countdown interval. For the next demonstration, I'll reduce that down so that we, I don't have to um, think of something to say whilst we're waiting for this to become zero. But this is the settling time when the person that's having the scan has a chance to just relax and try and meditate or do what they do to relax. Now the biofeedback has started. It's now applying 71 hertz and it's slowly incrementing by 0 0.01 of a hertz. It will increment up to 73 hertz. What Spooky is doing is going one hertz either side of the frequencies that are loaded inside the program. And that way, Spooky can further refine a frequency that's in a program or the frequencies within the program and come back with more precise values. And at the end of the scan, Spooky will report back and say which frequencies, which exact frequencies provided the greatest response. Now, maybe what I might do, I want to show you the report at the end of the biofeedback scan. So I'll choose a single progr frequency program. I'll go to control allow generator overwrites, and I'll load that single frequency in. And we'll take this scan to the very end of the duration. Now I've, sent, I've set the uh, wait time to zero because I don't really want to have to wait for too long before the biofeedback scan starts, and we're away, away already. Now if you're not setting up your computer yourself and then jumping onto the bench, uh, the, um, the bed, wherever you're doing a biofeedback. If you've got someone to help you, you can have a shorter duration of a start delay. If you're doing it by yourself, we recommend having a setting of around 200. That means quite a long time for your body to settle down and give yourself a chance to relax completely. Now, Spooky is scanning one hertz either side of 72 hertz. It's quarter of the way through now you can see the frequencies incrementing as we speak. Now, just a, oh, it's, 
I haven't loaded in the single frequency program because I didn't allow generator overwrites. Oh, I did, but I didn't delete that program there. So let's go again. Sorry, Echo. <laughs> it also pays to have a very forgiving um, subject as well. Okay, so we've only got one frequency loaded in. So it will be after um, 200 pulses, pulse beats, this biofeedback scan will complete. Now, if Spooky Pulse detects any errors in the data, an error is where a difference in heart rate between one beat and the next is beyond what is regarded as normal. It might mean a jump in a pulse rate, 60 on one pulse beat, 200 in the next. That may indicate that the patient has moved and the movement in the sensor has given a false signal. It is, of course, important to remain as stationary as possible, much as ECHO is now. Then uh, Spooky will put a line here indicating a reading was not found. And so that recording will be missed, and then Spooky will wait for the next valid report. Now, Echo asked earlier, is it okay to put the hand cylinders on your leg? Now, it's not good to put your hand cylinders on your leg, but what you can do, and what is recommended, is you place a pillow there. Much better, yes, well, there we go. And so uh, that means that she doesn't have to use her muscles to hold the hand cylinders up. Of course, if any muscles are taut, it's going to give a false reading because your body or part of your body is stressed. Okay, we've passed the halfway mark. So things are looking good. I'm pretty keen to show you the results at the end of it. The results will show only one frequency, only one frequency, but we're further refining 40,000. If we want to find the exact frequency to help for echo here in whatever ails her. Now this was just a random program, single frequency program, just for demonstration purposes. You know, the biofeedback doesn't need to have the person connected onto a generator or their nails put into a speaker remote. So, you know, if it can be used as a general lie detector or as a muscle tester, if you like, where you want to know the truth about something, which is your subconscious. You ask a question, and your body will respond. And, you, and so it's a way of sort of detecting whether something's good for you. You can hold a food in your hand. Some people you hold the food in their left hand and ask themselves the question, is this food good for me? Or hold some medication or supplement, is this good for me? And if your body's saying no, 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 your heart rate will increase marginally, and you'll see that in the graph. And you can view the graph, and you can see if it turns red and green. We've almost finished. Oh, my goodness. There we go. And we have 39,999.07. Now, that is the exact frequency that you should be using in a subsequent program to cure yourself of whatever 40,000 hertz does. Of course, when you do it seriously, you choose the program that you think is most ap appropriate for yourself, and Spooky will find the exact frequencies that are best for you. At this point in time, you save it. You save the results. You click on here. You give the program a name. So this can be called um, uh, test scan. I like to put the date in the program because for future reference, you'll know when you perform the biofeedback scan. Oops. Uh, and the scan today is the uh, April the 7th, 2017. The frequency has already been entered, the draw has been entered. You can enter more notes here, so sitting comfortably. Nice. Oh, okay, that's good enough. I'll move myself a little bit so I can save it. Here's the save icon here. Are you sure you want to save the uh, save and exit? Yeah, we'll give it a go. 
Now, what happens now is that the database is now loaded. The program you've just created is saved in the custom database. And so you can search for it and then run the program later. And we are done. Now they, they go, well, thank you very much. Um, and I, you, you said before you had some work to do. So, so thank you for helping us out there. Okay, I'll put the pulse on myself, but you won't run the frequencies through me. I had enough shocks for today. Now, what I'll show you is the last way that Spooky2 can perform a biofeedback scan. And this is actually a really cool way, because this one you can go and choose a long program and refine. Now, let's say I've got abdominal inflammation. I want to know uh, which of the frequencies within this program are best for me. And so I've chosen the program. I go to control, allow generator overwrites, and I load the program into the generator. Now there's a, quite a few frequencies here. Now if I go to using a refinement scan, it'll take quite a long time to go through and tell me the precise frequencies. You can break this down to smaller scans, maybe scan four frequencies one day and four another day, and that is actually what I recommend. But if you use a grade program scan, you watch how fast this goes. Now I'm assuming that my pulse is being detected by Spooky Pulse. I haven't checked it, I've just slipped it on. I'm hoping it is. Okay, yes, I have a pulse. Now, look at this. The speed that the frequencies are being stepped through are fast. At every pulse, a different frequency is being applied. You can see the results of that here. Now, I don't generally like to use my own pulse for demonstration purposes because my pulse tends to be quite slow. It takes a very long time to go through scans. But even with my slow pulse, you can see that the report has been generated you'll see that for every frequency there's a number that's in brackets for this report and the other reports that Spooky2 provides in the biofeedback scans. What's in the brackets? Okay, I'm, I'm told there's, there's questions coming through. I'll try and power through as quickly as I can. Um, those, what's in the brackets is the value that Spooky2 got back from the frequency being applied. Because this um, okay, just in finishing off what I was saying, the ones at the top, the frequencies at the top are the ones that were best suited to me. And so 380 hertz provided the strongest response, and between, uh, 2,489 hertz provided the least response to my body. And so I can save this again to a program and um, run it at a later time. Because this program, this type of biofeedback scan is so fast, I can increase this samples per step, and I'm going to use 10 and rerun it without changing anything. And I'll show you the differences, what changes. Now, you'll see the, 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 this line here is going from 0 to 10. Every time this line jumps, it's a, it's a heartbeat. Now, it's counted to 10, it's found the average of the 10, and it's put the value within spooky too. The next time, um, the next frequency is being applied, it's being applied for 10 pulses, and the average of those 10 pulses is being used for calculations. And so it's very, very precise. And even using a sample step of 10, within about a minute, a minute and a half, this program will complete, and I'll have very, very accurate results from the biofeedback scan.